Hello, everyone. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to, well, you know what this is, but for those of you who don't know, this is the virtual guitar summit, guitar playbacks virtual summit. First one, and I was just talking to Jesse, who was waiting in the back, and I think this will be the first out of many. I'm really hoping. This is so much fun. So what is this? Well, it's a series of free workshops. Every day, we have a, a guest teacher who's coming or who's not coming somewhere in the world and who's teaching on a subject to help us grow together. And uh, today, I have a very good friend, and he's actually in the studio, which is why I'm in a different space of the studio. We decided to do this together in the same room. It's always good to get with, uh, with him. I'll talk about Jesse in just a little bit, but first, a little bit of housekeeping. So these workshops are live. You are watching live right now, most likely. You're on YouTube or maybe Facebook. However, uh, the replays are not going to be av available forever on those platforms. In order to grab your lifetime access to the replay, you can do that for free. And there is a place where you can do that. It's right here. You can get the free workshops. And once the live workshops are done, my job starts because I edit the workshops and into, um, I, I just remove all the crap that you're hearing right now. <laughs> and then you can also get some supplemental contents to work on all the lessons, backing tracks, PDFs, and all that stuff for free, but you need to do it now, or at least this week, because then it's over. It's really a limited time thing and it's all free. And in addition to that, when you register for free to grab the workshops, you also get entered into a worldwide contest. These giveaways, we'll have more giveaways at the end of this session too, we'll do them live, but there's a grand prize, which is offered by PRS Guitars and Sweetwater Music. And you get a chance to win a brand new SE Custom 24 guitar offered by PRS. I chose the, the Sunburst color, it's my favorite, it's, it's awesome. That was not the PRS, that's an old guitar. <laughs> the real one is over here. Um, it's ready, it's untouched, it's awesome. I'll show you real quick. This beautiful guitar right here. Brand new in the box. I took it out because I couldn't resist just trying it. I did my workshop with it uh, a couple days ago. It's amazing but it's staying in the box in our ship worldwide. So one of you will win that awesome guitar. The drawing for that will happen next week, but make sure that you register for the workshops. The link is below and, and again, get access to lifetime access to all these workshops. Okay, so today we have something very special because um, I've worked, I've, a little story. Who's Jesse? You might not know Jesse, but when I moved to Fort Collins, Colorado, that was about, gosh, maybe 12 years ago or so. I lived in Chattanooga, Tennessee at the time, and uh, I wanted to know what was going on where I was moving to, Fort Collins, Colorado. And I did a quick search, and uh, the Academy of Guitar popped up. And I reached out and uh, got an email from Jesse, who owns the Academy, and started talking. And I think we emailed a little while first. It's funny because I'm talking to you here, but Jesse's in the back looking at the screen, which is in the back. Here, check this out. This is kind of fun. See, <laughs> say hello. <laughs> You're back, <laughs> the mystery man. It we emailed a few times, and I think it was only it was it was a while after that we really got to meet and became friends and hung out and and all that. So it's just a joy to work with them. And today, yes, something special for everyone: advanced players, beginners, and. Um, you know what, I'm gonna let him talk about it, but stick around till the end and uh, make sure you keep it positive in the chat. Anytime you interact in the chat, whether it's a uh, hello or a question, which we'll have Q and A's at the end, that'll, be, um, that'll allow you to be entered for some live drawings that we're gonna do at the end. Just one comment is enough. But for now, I'm gonna bring Jesse in. I'm gonna remove this for now and let's bring Jesse in. Hello, Jesse. Hey, hey. You're far away in the back of the room over there. Right, right. <laughs> Wall of an enterprise. Yeah, yeah. Really fun to do this. Uh, without further ado, I'll be on, I'll be here. I'll hang out. And of course, I'm in the same room. So uh, if there's any questions, I will interrupt you. 
But for now, I'm going to give you the stage and Excellent. move myself discreetly. Uh, hopefully, it'll work. It never works during these <laughs> hey. workshops. I always end up being the only one on the screen. That's not what I want. But uh, we'll see. Okay, I think I got it. Okay, Jesse, five, four, three, two, one. You're on. All right. Excellent. It's good to be here. I was jamming out to that countdown music. That was cool. But uh, yeah, I appreciate it. It's good to, good to be here. I see a lot of people are here from all over the world, and it's uh, it's cool. It's cool to be able to do these things. So far, it's it's been fun checking out everyone. Um, what I want to do today is I kind of want to talk about you know taking taking simple ideas, some things, um, just ideas, ways that we can. We can start with a basic idea and kind of embellish it from there. I want to start with a, a power chord progression, um, and we're just going to kind of build build from there. This is like. Something like that, you know. So like, let's say let's say you had a situation where there's two guitar players in the band. One guy is playing that. You know, what are some options? What are some things that I could that I could play along with that instead of just playing the the same thing? Um, you know, maybe maybe what I could do is just play some power chords in another position. Um, let me see if I got got this on this loop here. See if this works. Yeah, so I could do something like... You know, something like that, you know, just grabbing, I just grabbed an A power chord off of the, off the D string, added the, the octave on there, had the fifth in the octave, just moving that around, A, F, G, E, G, C like that that could give it some more texture you know somebody's playing down here on these these lower lower strings i could do that um, um i could have done that can you hey hear man. me there? i'm so yeah. i'm sorry to interrupt uh no that's great except that uh when the looper is on we can hear the looper but we cannot hear your guitar right now when you're, when you're playing oh let me see oh, there you go try again see the looper's great yeah can you hear that Yeah, that's great. But if you stop the looper... Ah, okay, great. Yeah, we got you. Okay, back to Is you. Back there? All right. All right, cool. All right, so... so, Or I could have done, you know, maybe on the A string, grabbed A, F, G, you know, kind of played through there. And that's cool. That'll, that'll flesh it out, give us some, some different things. But... Um, Maybe what we could do is add some harmony to it. Um, so first thing we'd want to do is like, what what key is this in? And when we're dealing with power chords, sometimes there's not a lot of information there because we don't have majors and minors, and um, you know that that's all not intact. So, but one thing I could do is think of this in terms of the resolve. We're always trying to listen to things in terms of you know, tension and, and resolve. That's what music is doing all the time. And uh, so if I were to play through this, and I'd start on this A and stop on this F, let's hear that. Really leaves us hanging so far. So. Still leaving us hanging right there. Keep going. It really feels like it's, it's got to go somewhere. Something still has to happen. So. Still not, not there. Ah, a lot of tension right there. And then you can feel it come back. You can feel it come back to that A. You can feel it resolve right there.
So it's like, so it seems like A is the tonality of this thing, but you know, is it, is it A major? Is it A minor? What, what is it? So I could quickly figure that out if I, if I thought, well, A, F, if I tried an A major scale, Already I see a note that's that's not in there. If I'm going A, B, C sharp, we had a C in there earlier, so that doesn't work. F sharp, so A major, not the key. Let's try it. Let's try A minor. A, B, C. Now we got that. D, E, F. We got the E, the F, G, A. So yeah, all, all of those, all those. fit in A minor. So, so that's the place we could start. We could think, well, what are the chords in an out of A minor? Um, another way of thinking about that, A minor being relative to C major. If you know your harmonized major scale in terms of, you know, major, minor, minor, major, major, minor, diminished, major. Um, then we could think about what those, those chords are. Um, so the C is major, D, E, that's three, that's minor, F is major, G is major, A is minor. So, so if we play A minor, F major, G major, E minor, back to G major, and then the C major, So now we can hear like a harmony with it. But here's a situation where, you know, we were playing something that was kind of kind of rocking, you know, had some gain to it. Um, probably wouldn't want to, you know. Little, little grindy there like that. So um, maybe I could just break that down and think of, think of uh, just like a root and a third. Think of the thirds that go with it. Maybe, you know, Think of like dyads, just two note things where, um, so if I start on an A and I do the minor third to the C, then I can go to F and play a major third, and then G, the major third, E, minor third, back to the G with the major third. I could just drop right down to a C on a major third. So maybe let's hear how that sounds. So I get a little little harmony there like that. So it kind of fleshes it out a little bit, um, you know. So and it still has that. You know, I can still have that gain that gain sound. I mean, I suppose I could, you know, if I was using some of these open position chords, I could utilize some technique where I, you know, pick some single notes out or um, you know do some palm muting in there. <laughs> Something like that, you know, and that would that would work without full on strumming, you know. So, um, but I thought I could do that, and then so that gives me some some different ideas. But that's that's taking that that knowledge of thinking of that harmonized major scale, knowing your your chords that are built off of each step of your major scale, and I'm just thinking of the you know three note chords, just the triads um, at this at this point, but. You know, maybe some other things I could do is, if I'm thinking about these scales, A minor. And I've got C major right here. 
I could use notes out of that, kind of embellish this even, even more. Um, let's see. I could give it like So I was just using using some notes out of out of these these scales. You know, I was thinking if I have my A minor right here, I was kind of adding on this And then here, I'm kind of in this C major scale. Going up to this G, which I guess technically, if you think about this, I'm now I'm popping up into this Dorian mode. Just to give some, some different ideas. But let's say, let's say you have that. That's something that you've been, been working on, playing, playing that. And you now maybe it's something you, you did a long time ago and you're looking for new ideas. And uh, instead of always looking for stuff that's, you know, you know, something fresh, something always trying to be inspired by some, something else or somebody else, sometimes you can go back into your library, some of the things that you've done and uh, just revisit them think about them differently and uh, you know um, so I could take I could take this same thing and you know maybe like uh, you know take that idea that I was thinking of the the A and the C all of these strings are pretty open open game in this in this key all the open strings fit in the key so I could just do something like that maybe I could just do like a Add that F in there, you know, and uh, maybe get like a G, like that. Just get some different sounds. I mean, another way you could think about it like this, like uh, um, I see this sounds like Dire Straits. So that's this kind of progression is kind of a typical, you know, that that type of movement. You know, this other one I'm going to talk about in a little while. It's, it's very similar too. Um, but uh, like even if you took this this power chord, this A power chord, and um, what if I what if I dropped my finger down and and barred that right there and got this this note on top? Gives me kind of an interesting chord. Um, well, I could drop down to this this F. Do the same thing. The G. I could see a problem getting ready to happen here if I do it off this E. Because now I get this, this F sharp. So I'd probably I'd probably steer clear of that one. But it kind of gave me some interest on these. Let's see what that sounds like. Try that. So that gives me some other some other things to do, and may, maybe I take that out of out of that context, and and play some different rhythms with that, play it differently. Um, now I, I can come up with an entirely different type of song or different feel. Maybe, you know, throw in some, you know, do some, just try different things. So like taking, taking your G chord, alter it, take a note off, add a note, see what happens. A minor, throw a, giving it like an A minor nine. 
taking that F, maybe take the take that finger off or even off. And at this point, I you know, doing that, it's not even a matter of knowing what to name this chord. You know, what what is what is it called or what's what's that mean? Um, it doesn't really matter at this point. You know, if I wanted to go back through it and figure it out, I could, but I'm just trying to find ideas and things that sound cool. Um, so that's a good place to start. And I think, I think what happens is, you know, a lot of times when you're playing against things like power chords, again, the main thing is it's not necessarily defined by the chords that you're playing because of the major and minors don't exist. They're kind of implied more than, more than anything. And I know that I've kind of heard that before that when you hear notes, um, we are kind of conditioned to, when we hear a melody, we can kind of hear the harmony in our heads. It's inferred there like that. So um, I think that's why when we, were, when we were playing, you know, playing through this and I was saying like, if I stopped there, we don't feel it resolve. And you know, it's kind of building more tension there. Seems like it wants to do something and then you feel it, you feel it come back. So the main thing is just always trying to find out where, where things resolve. But now let's think about this in terms of like a, a, a soloing situation. And you know, like I know David talks about this a lot. A lot of people have, have said this and you think about minor pentatonic is always a good place to start with something. And uh, so, I mean, if you were just earing something out and knew your guitar, you'd probably jump into that process, you know, of, You know, so I'm thinking, thinking minor pentatonic, you know. So let's say, you know, let's, let's say that's kind of my vocabulary. That's what I know at the time. But then maybe I, somebody showed me, you know, a, a minor scale and a major scale and how they're relative to each other. Um, so I, oh, maybe I'll, tr I'll try that and see how, how that works against it. So I, I just added a couple notes in there to that. Just, I just thought I'd throw this B in here and I used it to bend up to that C. I was getting that. I wasn't necessarily thinking about, you know, each chord that was happening and playing a playing a note to go to go to that. I was just using that as as a, a way to get around and uh, find some sounds and some some melodic ideas. So, you know, that's just as you incorporate more things. You know, I know somebody had had commented earlier when when I first was talking about this and thinking, you know, what are some other options you could do? And they said triads and, and, uh, and I know in the workshop yesterday, there was a lot of, t you know, talking about arpeggios and learning about arpeggios. And that's another thing, you know, when I was saying, just play the root and the third, well, you know, I could outline that, that triad arpeggio, I think like the, uh, you know, go to the F. Major and G major, down to the E and minor, back to the G major, down to the C. So you kind of, when you hear in the arpeggio form, you really hear this this movement. You hear what you know what this this power chord thing was implying in the first place. Um, you know, but what if we threw in, what if we, I mean, we kind of have the liberty to do this, you know, if we wanted to alter one of these chords or think of it as a different, a different way, you know, what if, uh, what if on this E, what if we make it a, a major, let's hear what that sounds like.
See how that kind of, I gave it a major there and it, it really wanted us to drive it back to that A because I'm giving it that, that G sharp and that wants you to get back to that, to that A. So that would be like, you know, if you had something that was A minor, F, G, throw the E major in there. That E really wants you to get back to that that A minor. So there's some some different different options that you could that you could do there like that. Here's another. You know, where somebody mentioned the Dire Straits thing. Well, um, if we let's hop over to like E E minor here, and uh, actually thinking thinking in terms of power chords again, um, I'd go through the same process. You know, in terms of if I took took this and I had like a. I'd, I'd try to find where the resolve is on that, and I would probably come back to E as the resolve, thinking E minor. So, um, but so if I did that same process and I thought about, well, what's some chords to to go with that? Um, if I thought, uh, so it would be in this case, we'd give us E minor, it would give us D major, give us C major, B minor. And then if I was playing these, I was playing these as single notes, but if we thought of chords, if we were in E minor, that would give us like a G major, and it would give us a F sharp diminished. So, but if I went further and I thought about it in terms of seventh chords, I'd have, I'd have E minor seven, I'd have D dominant seven being the be in the five chord, C major seven, B minor seven, B G major seven, F sharp minor seven flat five. But so say I mean, this was like a rocking thing, you know. But if I was looking for some other chords, you know, it's like well these these chords are they're cool, but they're you know maybe they're not the the, the chords for this this progression. Um, in terms of, maybe I'm looking for an intro or something, trying to think of an intro for that, or a breakdown or a, you know, something in the, in the middle of the song. Um, what if I just took these chords, what if I, again, this is the same type of deal where all of these strings in this key are, are in the key, open. So, so if I took, an, I took a, an E minor, E minor seven, and I lifted up this bar, that would give me that that open G and that that open E right there. And then if I go to this D dominant seven, but instead of making it that really that real dominant sound like that, if I took if I lifted this away, again had that open G and open E. Kind of a cool chord. Do the same with this C major seven just to get that high E up there. Something like that. So the main thing here is to keep in mind that, you know, we started with a, a power chord progression that you know that lives unto itself. It's 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 fine. You know, um, and if that was a song you had and you were writing that, that'd be that'd be cool. Um, but like if we, uh, you know, I explored this a little bit, tried some different things. Now all of a sudden I'm getting getting some other ideas out of that. Some different some different chord ideas. Maybe a whole new new song. You know, um, sure I could put it together, but anytime I'm experimenting like this, it's gonna give me gonna give me more ideas, some more things that I could do um, to just expand my 
creativity. And uh, so I think that's a good place to start, you know, taking, taking simple things, reworking them. I mean, you could do that with other people's songs just as, just as well, really, you know. Um, rhythm's a big part of things too, you know, how you, how you treat something, you know. Maybe, you could take, take something that you've been playing, but play it in a different rhythm, play it half time, play it faster. All of a sudden it takes on a new, new life that way too. So um, I just know that, that that's helped me a lot uh, going back to things that I've, that I've done plenty before. Um, instead of always searching for something new and learning new material, um, that's cool. But if I can't take it and bring it back and apply it to something that I'm familiar with, it's harder for me to to get that you know process that new material and and implement it so i think it's always good to go back and and do that obviously you know we could go as you learn more things you can go further and further into this and we could alter chords we could do you know, all the stuff you know that you can think of um you know interpret interpret different things throwing you know well i'm going to do melodic minor over this or whatever all kinds of different things that you could do but um but I think um, the point is just starting somewhere and seeing where it goes. Another thing I wanted to talk about is uh, the idea that, you know, when we're talking about harmony, um, you know, I kind of think of it in terms of like a, you know, a lot of instruments are playing single notes. You know, if you think about saxophone players and trumpet players, violin players, you know, so many, so many instruments are single note instruments, not a lot of you know, multiple notes that you that you can play on those instruments. So that's why you have, um, you know, like choirs. You, know, you have a cappella groups. You have full choirs. People in different different voices. You've got your, you know, low voices, your high voices. Um, you know, and same with strings and and you know, wind woodwinds. But uh, we have all that on guitar. You know, when we're a lot of times as guitar players, we've, we're first learning things as a, as a shape, you know, and, and uh, we might look at a chord book or something like that and, then, you know, okay, here's a, here's a D minor chord. You know, maybe we don't even know why it's a D minor chord. We're just looking at the book and it tells us that, it, that it's that. And, you know, A minor and F and C. And, we learn those chords and a lot of songs, a lot of things use those chords and a lot of, a lot of people play guitar to be an accompanying instrument um, to, for their voice. And, um, you know, just like piano, um, same, same thing. But, but if I were to pick this apart, if I was thinking of this in terms of a, uh, all the voices in this, I'm playing a D minor chord and I've got the D in the bass here, but as I go up, I've got this F up here on it's the highest note I'm hitting. When I go to this A minor, I've got an E up top, open, open E. And then I go back, I go to an F. It gives us that, that F again. And when I go to a C, now I've got this, this high E again. So really what happens in the upper voicing of these chords is it's really kind of repetitious, you know, F and E, F and E, even though the supporting harmony to that is, is moving. So that, I would think that would be cool for, you know, like if you're strumming something, backing somebody up, you know, vocally, um, coming up with a melody over that. But let's say, all right, maybe I learned these chords and now I'm exploring my guitar more and I, I know some other chords or you know, how to build my chords. I know the notes that make up these, these chords now. I'm gonna try it in a different spot. So maybe I take this D minor and go up here and think of it off the root on the D string and uh, play a minor chord. Here, and then we go to the A minor here, bar in that, and then F major, and then C major. So now already 
It's the same chords, you know? But it's got a little different sound to it. You can hear some different, different voices in there and voice leading. And so maybe my ear, I kind of, I kind of like the idea of taking this D minor, go to this A minor, and instead of going all the way up to this high E, maybe just stopping on that C. And then do the same thing on this F, I'll stop on the A string. And then go up. So now I have like a... If I have the root note and the, the higher note that I'm going after. Now I'll switch that to an A minor 7 even, let's see. So, completely different idea from... You know, gave me a, just an, uh, another way to go. Um, so maybe I kind of like the idea of those, those chords together and I'm thinking, ah, oh, I'll create something out of that. And I kind of like that as a clean, clean sound thing. And, um, but maybe I want to, you know, I want to rock it out a little bit. And I'm thinking, well, the, playing up here might be a little, a little too high sounding for what I'm, what I'm looking for. What, can I play this down here somewhere? Come up with another idea. So think of D minor here, and then maybe, maybe like A minor. Or I could think, well, I've learned a seventh chord. You know, I know A minor seven, so I could, you know, A minor seven, like that. But that's like, well, that's cool. It's kind of jazzy. Maybe it won't fit in my rock thing. What if I just do these? I'll try that. F major seven, like this. And then uh, go to a C right there and turn it into something like a. So, I mean, if somebody heard me play that, those chords, um, they might not know that that came from, from that, you know, learning those open position chords and doing that. So that's what I'm getting at is the, the idea of taking things that you already know that maybe seem like, you know, it's not up your, your alley or your style or whatever. Um, adapt them to your style, figure out ways to, to adapt it or try different, different things, you know, and, and, uh, you know, so, and I mean, yeah, like I, I went over to this C, I didn't do anything too spectacular. I just did a power chord, but just, I thought, oh, what if I walk it up, you know, like a chromatic idea. And like I was talking about before, you know, rhythm plays a, a big, big part in changing up ideas too, you know, so I was trying to, trying to take this somewhere and I was utilizing some like I was talking about before, I mean, I've got a, some some gain on this, and I'm playing chords that, you know, typically, you know, when you if I just were to strum that, you know, it kind of starts falling apart there. But it, but I was giving it kind of mute and picking certain notes up. And there, instead of playing that full F major seven, I was just playing. And really, when I, when I think back on some of this, when I was first doing some of these things, I was playing in a band that was more of a, more of a hard rock band back in the late eighties, early nineties. And, and, uh, you know, and that was, 
starting to be the time where they were bringing in, uh, um, you, you were starting to see like acoustic versions of things on MTV and, you know, um, that was starting to become a, a thing that was happening. And so you'd see people breaking their songs down, playing more acoustically. And um, I always thought it was interesting to, to have more more tones and more things that, you know, under my fingers that I could do, um, you know, rather than just straight straight power chords. So that kind of led me into into some of these other other ideas. Um, anyone have any questions at this point? So, um, people don't really like it. Oh, I know, man. It, I was afraid that they really would. They're really confused. Right, right. So maybe we should, like, cut it. What do you think? Should we just, like, people hate it? No, no, people love it. <laughs> well, I think the I, best uh, part of this whole thing was when you dropped the guitar. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, people, we, we just had a little game with them, and I said, okay, get this to 100 like for, likes for another trolling moment. And oh, right on. No, people love it. Right on, man. Um, cool. Yeah, there's a few questions. Yeah. Um, but if you have other stuff, that's awesome. Like, people are really loving it. Yeah. I'm loving it in the back. Yeah. Sorry, cool. I just had to cool. do no, a I'm glad. Moment. I'm glad. Thank you for I'm glad. This to 100 likes. I can't believe you made it all the way over here, David. <laughs> <laughs> after after CrossFit sorry, earlier. No, they, they love it. Seriously, you know. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, we're having fun, man. It's it's this is this is really cool to be able to to do this and you know, um, <laughs> being able to hang hang with David, you know, and and some of the people we've we've all we've kind of met together and and. Uh, you know, it's, it's such a, a brotherhood and, you know, just, and when I say brotherhood, I mean, it's sisterhood as well. There's we, a lot of female guitar players and um, all of us. It's just that camaraderie of guitar players and, and uh, you know, just sharing, sharing, you know, infos and, you know, war stories and things like that. And, uh, you know, but, but yeah, so, you know, as I go think back through some of the, the earlier workshops and, you know, that we've that we've seen this this week, um, a lot of this come really kind of comes down to things like uh, um, just just basic knowledge of of your major scale and minor scale to start with, you know. Thinking of of uh, you know, uh, so like if we thought of a you know C major, mm -hmm. like we were doing that earlier, you know, one two three four five six. You know, if you start on the sixth step of your your major scale and play through, um, you've got you've got your minor scale. So, and uh, one thing I wanted to just 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 a little little thing I wanted to point out in terms of of uh, intervals and those types of things, just real quickly. Um, one way I I think of of intervals is just just the chromatic intervals, just in terms of if you start on your A string on an A, or I mean your E string on an A, fifth fret, and go to your first fret on the A string, half step, so I played from A to the octave of A. I played every note in between a and the octave of A. And uh, so there's, those are all the distances that you're gonna have. So when you, I mean, you might have something that's gonna skip a string or something like that, but, but when you think of melodies, you think of things, it's gonna be one of those, one of those intervals. So if you're finding a note and, and you're, list, you're trying to find the next note, it's gonna be one of those intervals. You know, it's, if, if you hear a note and it's the next note is higher, you know, just go along until you find that, until you find that next note that, that it is, you know, so, but I think it's good to know the names of these intervals and the, and the sounds of them, you know. Um, there's a couple of confusing things that I think people get hung up on that I, maybe I can clarify. Um, like if I go from this A, I go to this B flat. Well, we call that a minor second. Um, but if you think of a, a major scale, it's a whole step. You know, so I'm going to a B. If I go from an A and I go, you know, if I'm starting minor scale, it starts the same. 
So that second step is the same. Um, so that, you know, when people are saying, oh, just intervals are just scale steps, uh, it's kind of true for the most part, but, but minor second is a half a step. And then you have major second, you have minor third, and that's where it starts following, following the scale in there. And then you have your fourth. If I did a major scale, I'd have a fourth. Um, if I did a minor scale, fourth, that's the same. If I, uh, same with the fifth. It's the same. That's why they call this a perfect fourth, perfect fifth. Um, They're the same in there, so just some some things like that. I think looking at looking at intervals uh, is a, is a good idea, and that because that can lead you to understanding how to harmonize your major scale, taking every other note, you know, of a scale and going up through that. Because that's what I was using for that that very first that very first thing, um, you know. So and then you know people have talked about the modes. That's just taking those scales, starting on each step of the scale, but you can use those to find your way around, find different places to play this, those same seven notes of a scale. You know, it's like if I was playing to this. And I was saying like I'm playing pentatonic. So I'm just playing in one position here. I could come up. Still playing pentatonic, you know. I jumped off into some some modes. Um, just added really two more notes to to the pentatonic. That's all I did. Um, I kind of went dropped into this, added this B in here at one point. And I went down here, got that B down in there too. So just to give it some more flavor, something something different, you know. But that's what I'm saying. Like so, if I if I take if I take like a, um, oh, cool, thank you. <laughs> There's a lot of those. Guys. Nice, lot man. Of those. I appreciate that. Yeah, so, so you know, it's, it's, it's always, and I started off, you know, just by ear, playing by ear. I mean, I guess I should say that when I was a little kid, I started, you know, I learned how to read music, you know, doing, you know, learning notes on the staff and doing that kind of stuff, and that was really cool. But I wasn't... I kept wondering like why I wasn't able to play what I was hearing. I had older brothers that were playing, you know, like Hendrix and Zeppelin and stuff and oh my darling Clementine wasn't really getting it, you know, so so but and I learned a little bit later about power chords and doing that kind of stuff and and then I learned my major scale, minor scale, pentatonic first, and then uh and it just all kind of started coming together. But I always found that, that if I had like kind of a guinea pig, you know, some sort of you know experimental uh, progression that I was familiar with and always added on something to that. Um, that would be cool. You know, like, uh, like, I mean, that over this, you could think of, um, you know, working on tapping. You know, you could think of arpeggios, like I was saying, doing like the, you know, you could, you could find A, C, and E here and tap that. You could drop down to that F, you know. Move up to that G, you know. Be a way to way to throw that in too. So anytime you're trying to, you know, I guess apply a new a new technique, new idea, something like that, go back to something that you've already already played on and, and do it that way. So, um, you know, this is David and I, and you know, some of us have talked about this. It's like always a fine line of of um, 
you know, that you walk when you, because you start opening up doors of, you know, going down, you know, theory road and and how deep you can get into that and and uh which i think is is cool but um you just i think if you start opening it up too too far um it pulls away from the idea that you know you should be the one that feels you know really empowered by by your instrument you know if you find something that sounds good feels good you know play it you know and and i think that that's been kind of the theme you know that david's had this whole time it's like you know it's it's your journey, you know. Yeah, that's Take your journey. That's that's something that is uh, coming through the chat too. People just love how encouraging you are and how um, easy it seems and how freeing it is too. Because I, 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 you have too. You've been teaching for so long too. We've all met students who want to like get better and good at guitar, and they take the path of. Uh, you know, learning scales, learning the fretboard, learning this, that, this, that. And then eventually they're kind of stuck in learning mode, but not making music mode. And that's you're right. not doing that here. So that's awesome. It's, that's, that's really cool. Yeah, it's. I, I think it's always about taking something and make, you know, making it musical, you know, right yeah. away. But that's that, that's a, another little thing when you think about that, because um, a lot of times when you go to sh show somebody a scale, they want to make music out of it right away, which is great to do. But then later, if they're talking about technique and building their technique up, um, they're not taking the time to like do the boring click, 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 you know, playing, you know, playing those, playing mm -hmm. those scales like that, you know. Um, so it's always that you got to do the boring stuff sometimes, you know, but I think as soon as you can, apply it musically yeah totally you know um man you could talk for hours i know yeah. it, which is <laughs> right. awesome like you <laughs> could you could deliver for hours which is amazing um but i want to be uh respect to, re respectful re respectful of your time it's all <laughs> but, good <laughs> we have uh, a few questions that came okay. out all right cool so um guys I'm, I'm controlling this on the phone which is a little bit difficult so normally i would pop up the questions but i'm having a hard time so i'm going to kind of rephrase them Someone asked a little bit about um, about rhythm playing, and I'm assuming um, it's maybe in a lead world. How how do you make how do you approach how do you combine rhythm with your lead playing? Do you have any tips, any strategies, any ideas there? Well, if if you're thinking about like rhythmic phrasing, you know, just if single note type of stuff, what I'm thinking of is when I want to start a phrase, when I want to end a phrase. So, um, you know, let's, let's, let's say if I was playing against something, if I played like the same, See, when I'm playing that, I'm, I'm kind of doing the same thing over and over. It's like I'm, I'm this, my sentences, you know, if I was speaking, would be the same length every single time. And it would feel, I'm playing along with it, and it sounds okay, and it's in key and all of that, but it seems like I'm not really going anywhere. I don't have emphasis on anything. Um, I mean, especially when I'm thinking about talking about this, I'm really aware of how I'm, uh, you know, I have pauses when I'm saying and I'm emphasizing stuff, you know, um, my, the level of my voice changes. That's kind of what happens when I'm, when I'm playing, you know, so I'm thinking of rhythmically, um, you know, having a shorter phrase or a longer phrase or when I want to end, when I want to end something, you know, so I think rhythm really, really does drive, drive it, you know, and, you know, you could start a phrase on the downbeat, you could wait, you know, let's see. I waited, and I waited in there a lot of times, and I waited to even get back to that that A that I was wanting to go to, you know. So, so I think th that rhythm, the timing, is a is a big part of it. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. awesome. Thank you. Another question came earlier several times, and uh, someone someone asked it 
somewhat again. So I'll use this as an example it's from Daniel. He's asking uh, any ideas on taking these bar chords and making different shell chords, which kind of goes with uh, another question that popped up earlier about inversions. So I guess the main idea is um, for someone to come up with more interesting chords uh, that sound maybe a little more open, more melodic. Uh, what's your approach there to do that? Yeah, yeah. I think uh, you know one one thing that I've I've done before, like. Well, when we're thinking about that E minor, D, C, you know, that, that whole situation. Well, sometimes you find uh, patterns on the neck that are, that are I don't know, um, they seem to be just kind of like uh, you strike gold. And uh, so, like if I was thinking of in this E minor, and this D, and this C, this whole thing, um, if I'm playing this E minor with the root on the A string, I can see that um, I actually have D major right next door, right here. And if I think of these three notes here, I've got the, the A, the D, and the F sharp. Well, that's a D major. Um, I just don't have the D in the bass. Um, so. So I could do something like I have this E minor like this, and I could just drop these fingers away, and I have a I have a D major right there. I could not hit that that E. I could just like that, and then I know that I have C here. I have a C right here, so I've got a C right there. If I just took this E minor. And I drop this third finger down to replace that fourth finger, and then bring my fourth finger over to that C. I've got a C major right there. So now I have E minor, I have D major, and I have C right there. And then what's interesting about this is that here's B, there was C, so there's B, there's B minor, which, you know, if you took a take a D and put a B in the bass, it's kind of like, you know, you're dealing with a, a form of a B minor. But so, so I have this E minor, I have D major, I have C major, and I have B minor right there. And then I had that little, so I could do like a, you know. That's another way I could I could do that, and I, I mean you could get so much mileage out of out of that right there. And I guess um, from a, uh, another way of looking at this, another way of mapping this out is just to think like um, if I'm in E minor or relative to G major, you know this would be Ionian, this would be my Dorian, this would be Phrygian and Lydian here. So in this Phrygian Lydian area, that's where you can. I mean I've got there's E minor. If I just put this G in the bass, now I have G major. So there's my minor, there's my major, just like that. So, so that's a good place, I think, to start, you know, to find those is in that position. Um, so many things you could do, you could get that. You got this bar, so it gives you so many things you can play. So that if that gives you some ideas. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, really quick, um, Blues Man. It, yeah, I can't make it up here. Here, uh, Thank you, Blues Man, because super chat. Thank you very much for, All right. for this. Cool. And he says, uh, up for a second hour, Jesse, we are. Unfortunately, <laughs> I've got to pick up my kids. That's right, cool. yeah. <laughs> a little bit. But we'll have Jesse back for sure. But thank you so much. Yeah. Um, so here's, here's the deal. I have a couple giveaways. Um, because of kind of technical issues, like my iPad didn't update and stuff, I'm, I'm controlling this on my phone right now, but I can't do the giveaways from my phone. So I have one more question for Jesse, and I will post that question. As you answer that question, you'll see me kind of twiddling on the computer because I'm preparing the next step, the giveaways. But here's the question for Jesse, and then I will do my thing, and don't mind me, 
my name. <laughs> Here's right. the question. It's from uh, Neil. Um, when you practice and you lick, do you do it really slowly, slowly hundreds of times? What's your technique? Mm, okay. That's a good question, really. Because uh, when I'm just coming up with creative ideas, um, I don't. You know, like because like, I probably stumbled on something. You know, that happened. It happened under my fingers. It was a quick little thing, or and uh, all of a sudden it stuck with me. Um, and uh, like I let's see. I remember doing something like that one time, like a. Uh, uh, And, and that just happened from, from just playing, you know, uh, just trying. And I, I don't think I ever really broke that, broke that down and, and did it slow, you know. But on the other hand, uh, when I go to learn uh, particular songs, particular things, um, uh, I do. I do break them down and I break it down. I go slow. Um, I take a chunk at a time. And, and, and really, the best way to do it is, you know, maybe take something, you know, slowly speed it up, but don't spend any more than like 15 minutes on a, on one, one thing. You know, if you're doing it, if it's repetitious, you know, just take it slow, get it under your fingers and walk away from it, you know, get away because your brain is going to sit there and continue to learn that it's going to work without you being involved. So when you come back, um, it will be under your fingers a lot better. Then you can build it up, keep going. Cause that's the main thing you want to have this, you know, these things under, under your fingers, you know, if you're going to go record or you're playing in a band, you got to, you know, got to, got to play something with somebody. Um, just take, break it down into small digestible bits and, and do it, do it that way. Yeah. I think, uh, I think that's a good, a good approach. Um, you know, I'm trying to think of anything that I, you know, that I've really had to do that with. Uh, sometimes it's, it loses its, um, um, like the spirit of what it was, you know, why I did it in the first place in the, in the speed that I did it, just, just noodling, you know, but, uh, um, it doesn't translate, you know, like playing, playing it slow or certain things that, that don't do that. But, but, I, you know, there is a, there's a great, uh, uh, app called Transcribe that uh, is fantastic for for learning for learning things and breaking them down into small things and you can loop you can loop them play it over and over you can set the loop to actually um, increase the speed at, you know and and that's really cool because it just does it naturally you can say well, eight measures um, and then you can have it start to go faster and then boom you're there so. Looping, um, yeah, yeah. Looping is a is a really really good idea. I mean, that's the way. That's that's it. I mean, anytime you can take something and play it against another thing. I mean, my looping pedal. I love doing that. Just being able to put something down and try something against it and make all the mistakes in the world. Yeah, <laughs> so, that's awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Well, Jesse, that is awesome. Yeah. We're do this together. All right. Cool. So we got a couple of giveaways here. Um, to enter, well, a lot of you have are, are already are, are already entered. You just had to interact in the chat. Just one comment. Ten comments is not going to give you more chances. Just one is enough. So you can still enter. Hopefully, you're on YouTube or Facebook. That's the only way you can comment. And if you don't see the comment section, it means you're not logged in. So uh, log in. You have like a minute because I'm going to tell you a little bit about these giveaways. See all these guys, these brands up there. They're Awesome, because they're sponsoring this event. They're making it possible. Yeah. They're providing a bunch of prizes. And today, um, we have a couple. So first of all, let me tell you about the grand prize, which I told you about earlier. It's not broken. It's safe. And that's the, the PRS guitar. So in order to enter that one, you don't really need to be live with us. But in, in order to enter that one, you need to grab the replay of all these workshops so you get six workshops originally were was five robert renman was stuck in a snowstorm <laughs> so i took over so that it was the sixth one but he will be with us monday 
But in order to enter, you just grab all the replays to the workshops because they're not going to stay on YouTube and Facebook forever. In about a week, they will disappear. So make sure you claim that. It's free and you get all the backing tracks. Once the sessions are over, once later today, I'm going to go through what Jesse just taught. I'm going to edit it down uh, so that it really just get the, the interesting content to learn. And I'll add some backing tracks and stuff like that for you to practice. And if you redeem this, this week you will be entered and there will be the drawing next week to win the, the PRS guitar. But for those of you who are here today, we got two prizes. The first one is a care package from Diderio. So we get some, you get a, uh, a 15 foot long uh, cable and I'll, they will include uh, Diderio strings and a clip on tuner. So this is worldwide and um, I'll take care of shipping and all that. So. All you need to do is comment and I'm going to share the screen and we'll do this together. It's just completely random and we'll see who gets this first giveaway. And we have 114 entries so far. There are a lot more in the chat. I know that. So maybe or in, in, watching this. So make sure you enter. You see, you're entering now. Three more. All <laughs> right. In five seconds, we'll, we'll do this first drawing. Five, four, three, two, one, go. So this is for the care package from the Dario. The winner is Michael. Michael, these are yours. If you email me, make sure you email me. Today is best or tomorrow, but if you're live, do it right now because I really want to ship this to you. And just email support. I always have a typo, so I'll take my time at <laughs> guitarplayback.com. And we will verify that it is you. So there'll be no cheating. And then I'll send that to you. And uh, where is that email? Here it is. Um, oh, make it pop on the screen. Okay. So make sure you email me. And then we have a second drawing. Michael, you're still in. If you're still in the, the chat, you can win two times. But this one is from Eventide. And this is the Black Hole Reverb. I haven't played with it because I want you to have the feeling of a new pedal, but I'll show you what it's like. Well, it's an awesome reverb. I've heard it before, I mean, if you need a reverb pedal, this would be my recommendation. I actually uh, used the plug-in of, of that yeah. um, on, on our, our that Manatomic album that we did. Oh, cool. You know, yeah. It's one part in it that it just called for this, like a really deep, you know, reverb. Yeah. You know, and, and it was fantastic, man. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a killer pedal. They do, they do great, um, they do great plug-ins too, but it's really cool to have. That's going to be nice, yes. Okay, so let's see who won that one. And we'll just draw again. 147 people are in. Five, four, three, two. Come on, you can enter. I know you're, I'm talking to you right now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here we go. Oh, 148, maybe it's him. Shipped worldwide. All right. Dro. J-R-O, Mojo, this is yours. So make sure you email me at that same address. I'll verify that it's you and cool. I'll ship that to you. All the, all the gear is gonna be shipped next week. Cause right now we're just focusing on the, on the workshops and stuff. And then uh, of course, remember that uh, you can still grab that PRS guitar. Next week we'll do this live at some point, I'll announce it. But in order to get that, you need to enter uh, right here for free and grab the replays of all the workshops and the backing tracks and enter for the PRS guitar. Um, Jesse, tell us about your, uh, you mentioned the, the recording of your band. Oh yeah. Yeah. I, well, yeah. Had to do something during all this time, you know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I've been, I've been fortunate, you know, to have, have a couple of friends, you know, that, that we were able to get together and play music and, and, uh, um, with no, you know, no parameters, mm -hmm. just, just, let's just play music and see what happens. And as we did this over, over time, we'd wrote some music and, and, uh, ended up calling ourselves Manatomic. Nice. And, uh, 
and uh, yeah, we just got just put out an album, so it's out out there, you know, for the world now. Yeah. You know, so instrumental, right? It's all instrumental. It's three piece, you know. Mm -hmm. You know, I didn't do any really overdubs or anything like yeah. that. Didn't put, you know, other rhythms and you know, when it's a solo it's just bass and drums and mm -hmm. me soloing, you know, so so it's really you know, that's what we sound like. Yeah. You know, yeah. so it was, it was really fun to do. You I know? I love both kinds. I like the overproduced albums. Yeah, me too. Bit, me too. But I really, really like when it's well well done and I know it is because I heard yeah. I heard it I appreciate just that. three piece and yeah. where you have to really think about what you're playing and Definitely. How you work and yeah. Um so I'll um, yeah I'll leave the link. Yeah, no, that sounds good. For them to check yeah, this out. is I mean that's what I was thinking. This is like so cool to I mean I'm thinking about my YouTube channel. You know, with, yeah. you know I get like 16 views on something. You know, to see 148 people enter a contest, man, it's like that's awesome. Yeah, <laughs> it's so cool well, to be in front of all y'all. You deserve it's cool. a lot more. Appreciate like, that. We were just talking about that. Like the best musicians often are the less <laughs> right, recognized. Right. But it's great though. It's so fun. It's awesome. That is really really cool. Thank you. So thank you. Thank you. Everyone, thanks so much. And tomorrow, uh, tomorrow Friday, we will have Nick Kelly at 2 p.m. U.S. Mountain Time. So same time yeah. that you have this one. And he's going to uh, talk about um, playing over chords. So improvising over chords. So it's going to be super practical. Um, and Nick is also a good friend. That's, yeah. that's the cool thing. Like these workshops, yeah. working with you guys. Yeah, Nick's, Nick's great, great, man. Great We're player. We're just all friends and it's it's just awesome. Yeah. I feel really lucky. Um, so yeah, be there tomorrow. And then we got two more to go. We got tomorrow, Nick Kelly. And then Monday we'll have a blues workshop with Robert Renman. And again, more gear to win and grab the replays. And thank you so much. I'll Thanks. See you guys soon. And then Jesse, you'll be back. I know we have some <laughs> projects. We're talking about a podcast maybe. So yeah, we'll see. Yeah. We'll have some fun. All right, everyone. Cool. Have Thanks. a good night. It's probably late for you all. Yeah. <laughs> Take care.